Meiosis is a little more complicated and it's split into two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. During, my, during meiosis 1 we have a stage called prophase 1 in which you get the exact same thing happening as happened in prophase in your mitosis cell. Like so. Note to self, white tack does not stick to mints. So we've got the identical chromosomes being attached together with centromeres. Um, but then they do something quite special. So, I need to stop moving that. Obviously we've got our spindles and our spindle fibers forming. But in metaphase one, they don't line up along the equator one by one. You remember we said that these were the same gene but different alleles. Well, the chromosomes that are the same, that have the same genes but different alleles, sit next to each other on the equator, like this. And while they're there, they may, might do something called crossing over. See that slick paper change there? Crossing over is a bit like this. I'm going to use my notes for the sake of saying short, which you can't really see, okay? So you've got your two chromosomes, with my wonderful drawing skills there, sat next to each other like this. Let's use the eye, eyes one again. I have my green pen as well. Obviously, these have the blue eye and these have the green eye. But here, these two are touching. So they might do something called crossing over. This is where alleles of the same gene will literally cross over each other on something called, now this is called a homologous pair, these two chromosomes together. If you get two homologous pairs together, the genes that are the same will cross over like this. I'm trying to really show you this. There we go. This one's blue. This one's blue. Lots of green. This one's green and this one's green. So that your homologous pair ends up looking like this. Can you see that? Yeah. Your homologous pair ends up looking like this. This is because meiosis occurs when you are making gametes, which are sex cells. Crossing over ensures that you end up with sex cells with a variety of different genetics in them. Which is something you want. You want a large gene pool. Okay, so we're in metaphase one. And crossing over has occurred. Now also here you get something called random segregation, which basically means it then depends on which way around these sit on the equator. So maybe they sit like that, you know, with 
or maybe they sit that way around and once they're crossed over that means you get a variety of different genes on one side. Again, this ensures that you've got a large range of DNA in the cells you create. Spindles form just like metaphase in my mitosis and in the top as well. Like that. Anaphase is exactly the same again. But instead of pulling apart one chromosome from a pair of chromosomes, they pull away one chromosome from the homologous pair. So we'll move this down here. So they get pulled apart like, oh, we haven't shown our crossing over on our cells here. There we go. These cells have crossed over. And we get them pulled apart so that you have one pair. On each side. Telophase is exactly the same. The nuclear membrane reforms around our pairs of chromosomes and the cytoplasm splits. But then we move straight into metaphase 2. So in each cell, these chromosomes line up is what you'll remember from meiosis and we get the spindles reappearing in each cell like such it's not very clear I appreciate there we go and this nuclear envelope that formed telophase one is gone again that's gone completely so this is uh, phase two. You see that? You can see that. That's good. Um, which moves straight into anaphase two, which you will just recognise directly from mitosis. And in each cell, these are pulled apart, like so. Do and they're pulled apart by the spindles retracting to the opposite poles of the cell. Okay. Telophase two then occurs. And we end up with four daughter cells okay and these cells are haploid they have half the amount of DNA as a normal cell would and if you'll notice they each have a fairly unique makeup of alleles in them so this cell has the allele for blue eyes and hitchhiker's thumb this has the allele for green eyes but no hitchhiker's thumb this has the allele for blue eyes with no hitchhiker's thumb, and this has the allele for green eyes with hitchhiker's thumb. That is the result of random segregation and crossing over. We want all the different gametes to have the different genetic makeups because then we end up with genetic variation among our children. And that's mitosis and meiosis. In a nutshell, really.